All right, welcome back to the Top 25 Voter Pod. With me is my good friend, John Werner, checking his hair as we start the podcast. <laughs> See, I went hat again. Well, Bryce, uh, you just showed me your old school rockets. I am, that is pretty cool. Yeah, that's, that is really old school. Uh, that's like original logo, old school. Uh, that's good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, but we're here talking college basketball <laughs> and a uh, big one uh, on Saturday in uh, Lawrence. Uh, the Baylor men will face Kansas in a top 10 matchup. Baylor's back in the top 10 after this recent surge. The Bears won the first meeting 75 to 69 uh, in January at the Farrell Center. So, John, how do you see the rematch coming out? Well, as we all know, it's really hard to win at Allen Fieldhouse, but Baylor's won 10 of its last 11. They're playing really well. Uh, huge lift from a Jonathan Chama Chachua. Uh, Who, by, Baylor- by the way, has now gone back to the original uh, way everybody was saying it. Apparently, mm-hmm. he was like Americanizing it for everyone to try to make it easier, but well, I mean, we learned it, Jonathan Chamuchachua. So yeah. let's say it like that. Yeah, I think I got the pronunciation right. Yeah, I uh, think you did. Yeah. But we, we better check with him, you know, in the next couple of days, see if anything's changed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I, I understand, uh, you know, Kim Olajuwon went by Akim with an A for oh. half his career and then uh, changed it to added an h to to the to his name so yeah that really threw me off i don't know about you <laughs> <laughs> go on yeah anyway uh but but yeah I, I tell you the bears i think they're just really gelling um I, I wrote a column that ran today about you know last year they were limping into march they had a bunch of injuries you know of course every day john was out crier was out this year everybody's healthy they've gotten a big boost from John, and uh, I think they could win Saturday. I think they've got a deeper bench than Kansas. Now, I'm not going to go out and say they are going to win, but I think they have a really good chance. They've only won there once ever. Uh, they're one in 19 in Lawrence. So, I mean, <laughs> the odds are probably against them. But, man, I, I just like the way they're playing. Uh, you know, they're, they're a really cohesive team. Right now, offense, defense, uh, I, they're really looking good. Yeah, I'll play devil's advocate here. Uh, Kansas has only lost once all year at, in Allen Fieldhouse. Now, that loss that they had, they got their butts handed to them by yeah. TCU. Um, I don't see that happening. Um, I think it's a close game either way, who, wh- whoever mm-hmm. wins. Um, as many of the games in the Big 12 tend to be. Um, I, so, you know, in that case, it probably comes down to, you know, whoever makes shots, makes plays, you know, in the closing minutes. Uh, Baylor's been good in that regard. But Kansas is playing really well right now, too. They've yeah. won three in a row. Um, they had that stretch uh, in the midst of when they lost to Baylor where they lost uh, three in a row. Um, but if you look at that stretch, they actually played four ranked big 12 teams in a row. Now that's the nature of the beast in the big 12 and this schedule. Uh, but you know, it, they're not a, like, um, a vintage Kansas team, I would, mm-hmm. I would say, but they're still pretty good. And so I think it's going to be a tough game for Baylor to, to win there. Yeah. Not saying they can't obviously, but um, playing at home, I, I like the Jayhawks in this game. Yeah. Um, that said, you know, like I said, it'll probably just come down to who makes shots at the end. And I tell you, lately, it seems like one of those big three guards of Baylor has been stepping up each game. This last game, it was LJ uh, Cryer, uh, you know, making teardrops from the outside <laughs> you like those huh yeah uh and then yeah. The, the game before that it was flagler i mean obviously Keontae george is always uh you know capable of big games so should be a fun one no doubt um 
So as we mentioned, Baylor's on a pretty good run, 10 out of 11. Um, the last four by an average of 13 points, uh, coinciding with uh, the return of Jonathan Chambu Chachua. Um, good job. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so uh, now they are tied with Texas and Kansas uh, at nine and four in the Big 12 with five games to play. Um, but they also face probably, uh, not probably, by far the toughest <laughs> schedule out of the three that are fighting there at the top. So what do you feel like their chances are of a third straight Big 12 championship? Well, yeah, as we mentioned, the schedule, I, I don't think they're really good. Uh, here, here's what they have left. Okay, after Kansas, they're at K-State on Tuesday. Uh, then they play Texas at home. They turn around on a big Monday and play at Oklahoma State, which is playing really well right now. And uh, then they come home and uh, regular season finale against Iowa State. So that's extremely tough. Now, here's Kansas. Is after Baylor, they go TCU, which is really reeling right now without Mike Miles. Yeah, and think about this. The Jayhawks will be out for blood after they got – Oh, gosh. After TCU handed it to them in Lawrence. Exactly. And, okay, then they've got West Virginia and Tech at home which you would think would be wins. And then they play at Texas. So clearly that's Baylor's schedules tougher. And Texas has left, um, let's see, they've got, they host Oklahoma and Iowa State back to back. Then they go to Baylor. Then they go to TCU. And then they, uh, they host Kansas. So I would say Baylor's is the toughest. Texas is the second toughest. And Kansas is is the easiest among those three. All you know, the Big Twelve. It's it's nothing's it's easy. Not, it's not easy, but I, I would say Kansas has the edge just going by the remaining schedule. Yeah, that that seems uh, valid for sure. When you mentioned those five games for Baylor, that's that's a uh, a gauntlet. Um, they're you know, not whoever wins it will have earned it. I wouldn't yeah. say you know, but if Baylor, you know, manages to go four and one or something on this last five game stretch, they'll really have earned it because uh, like yeah. you said, that's, that's a pretty brutal murderer's row right there. But, but yeah. you know, the way they're playing, I mean, they, they could handle that. They could go four and one or something like that. Uh, I mean, they're, they just seem to be peaking at the right time here, but, but we'll see, you know, it's, it's going to be hard. I will say, you know, and we've talked about this before, but uh, as the NCAA tournament committee, you know, starts to meet, you know, in, in a few weeks, um, I think Texas, Baylor, Kansas, they all deserve to be on a pretty high seed line. Oh uh, gosh. Yeah. Because <laughs> this league is just so good. And, Obviously, uh, all three right now are ranked in the top 10. Is that right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that probably makes them, you know, no less than a two seed. So, uh, yeah. And, and that's, you know, they should be two or higher for sure. Oh, all yeah. Those, all those teams. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, on the <laughs> other end of the spectrum, <laughs> uh-huh. you're, you're covering a really uh, strong winning <laughs> team right now, John. Uh, I am not. Uh, the Baylor women are really. Uh, they have three straight losses. Um, I put in the game story for today. It's the first three-game losing streak for Baylor in Big 12 play since the 2000-2001 season. That was Kim Gosh. Mulkey's first year at Baylor. Wow. Um, it was also the first time they allowed 60% shooting in a game since Sonia Hogue was coach. <laughs> so, Holy moly. I know. Uh, th- these are not records you want to be making. <laughs> um, so, you know, the last two games have been particularly lopsided against Oklahoma State and uh, K-State. What what have you seen? What, what are their issues in your mind? Well, uh, it seems like, Uh, since that overtime loss against OU, which a game they just really blew, it just doesn't seem like their focus has been very good at all. 
Uh, I've uh, the last two games they've committed 39 turnovers combined, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not playing very good defense. Uh, it, it just seems like uh, teams are getting pretty like point blank open shots a, a lot of the time. I don't know. I'll hand it to you, Bryce. You, you've watched it closer. No, I think those uh, that evaluation is dead on uh, in terms of the lack of focus. Uh, Nikki Collin um, alluded to it this week when she mentioned that she talked to the team on Monday. They had, of course, that game in Stillwater on Saturday. Then they have an off day on Sunday, you know, off day because I'm sure they still lifted weights and things like that. But, you know, an off day from practice, they have so many of those built into the schedule by NCAA rules. Um, and then they met again for practice on Monday to get ready for K-State. And she asked the team, how many of you have watched the tape from the Oklahoma State game? And she said about half of the team raised their hands and obviously half didn't. Um, she mentioned that some of the players who hadn't watched it were starters. And she felt like that was sort of telling because, you know, how are you going to get better if you're not, you know, examining and self-evaluating, you know, not just waiting for the coaches to show you, you know, where you could get better, but, you know, doing it on your own time. She mentioned that Caitlin Bickle had probably watched it three times by that point. <laughs> right. Um so, you know, that's that's kind of alarming and kind of an issue, I would say. You need the buy-in from everyone. Um, and then you you hit on it. I mean, the defense has been poor. Um, and when you have a team like this Baylor team um, who, you know, doesn't have Asia Blackwell, doesn't have Dreanna Edwards, so, you know, they're very guard-oriented. Um, you know, you still have a good freshman forward in, in Bugs. You still have, uh, you know, kind of their glue player in Bickle who, uh, you know, they're infinitely better when she's on the floor. Um, but they're very guard oriented and that they're also very streak shooting. Uh, I've said that a million times this season. I mean, they're just a streak shooting team. So, uh, if you have a streak shooting team, that means you're going to have inconsistency in your scoring and your shooting percentage. But what can be consistent is your defense, your defensive effort. And right. uh, when they got off to that three and zero start, um, their defense was amazing, and they were, you know, and and they're still uh, now. It's probably fallen off after last night, but you know, they were still one of the best teams in guarding the three-point line in the Big 12. But, you know, it's all trending in the wrong direction right <laughs> now for the Bears. So um, it's it's not going well, and, and they need to get it corrected in a hurry. And it ain't going to be easy because they got a tough Iowa State team coming in to uh, Waco on Saturday. Um, so we talked a little bit about the NCAA tournament and seeding. Um, it's about a month away as we record the podcast. What seeds do you see these Baylor men and Baylor women getting? And, you know, also you feel like, is there a chance that the Baylor women don't make it in? <laughs> well, uh, as far as the Baylor men, I, I think one Big 12 team is going to get a number one seed because, you know, the, the committee just knows how tough this league is. And, uh, you know, even if it may not look like it right now in the polls, I think one of those teams, Baylor, probably Baylor, Texas or Kansas will get a one seed. OK, so and I think uh, I think there's a chance the other two will get two seats. I mean, the league is that good. Uh, they, they probably deserve uh, a one seed and a couple two seeds. I, I would say at the lowest, Baylor would get a three the, the way they're going right now. Uh, I mean, of course they could, you know, start losing, which I don't think will happen just going by the way they're playing. I don't think they'll get any lower than a three. I would say a two or a three is pretty likely for them. As far as the Baylor women, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know how many big 12 teams are going to make the tournament. Uh, what do you think about five maybe or something like that? 
Uh, it's a great question. Um, it's a league that has beat up on each other this uh-huh. season and um, generally has had three to four teams ranked in the top 25 most. Okay. Years. Um, I say six seems about right okay. just because of um, the strength of the conference. I mean, I just think that it's like if you look at the Big 12 compared to the SEC, let's say, um, it's it's so much better. I mean, it's just it's not even close, really. Um, now, you have two really good teams in the SEC at the top, but um, but that's it, really. I mean, it's a big drop off after that, whereas I feel like in the Big 12, it's it's much more jumbled. And uh, I think that should be recognized. Now, there's still a lot of other good teams out there in the country. I mean, the Big Ten is really killing it this year. ACC is pretty good. Um, Pac-12, mm, it's okay. Um, but so back to Baylor and the women. I mean, I, I think they get in. I think they're probably about a a six seed or something like that, which – Certainly would be lower than uh, we're accustomed to around here. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, seeding is is what it is, and I hate that expression. But, um, you know, it, it's all about matchups sometimes. And, you know, you're going to play good teams in the NCAA tournament no matter what your seed is. So um, <clears throat> now, if they continue to crater uh, – <laughs> and just continue to go in the wrong direction um so right now they are 29th in the country in the net rankings the net you know rankings uh which you know takes into account like strength of schedule and your quality of wins and all that kind of thing uh 29th is pretty good and in fact it's better than several ranked teams uh south florida Oklahoma, uh, Gonzaga are all ranked below Baylor in the, in those net rankings. Baylor has played a good schedule and they still, even at this point, John lead that big 12 in ranked wins. They have four of them on the season. Um, so that's, what's so inexplicable about this team. And I could see where Nikki might be pulling her hair out because they have shown that they're capable of playing really good ball and beating good teams. And certainly, you know, it was a much different conversation on this podcast when they were three and Oh, in the big 12, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, if they crater, could they fall out? Yes. Uh, I tend to think with five games to go, they're going to get it together and and get some wins but it's uh it's not going to be easy um i mean they've got iowa state on saturday and that's Mm going to be a tough one and you know the cyclones will be looking for some vengeance after baylor got them in ames and certainly baylor's not playing well uh then the bears go to tcu next week that should be a win everybody in the league has beaten (laughs) that's the one team this year the frogs are, are kind of there at the bottom yeah. Uh, you got Texas Tech at home. Um, you know, I feel like Baylor should win that, but you know, you just never know right now. You got to go to Austin. So that's a tough one. And uh, then you got West Virginia at home and West Virginia is a team that beat Baylor in Morgantown. So, um, you know, if Baylor can go three and two, in that stretch, I feel like, you know, they're probably safely in, uh, you know, especially if they win a game in the big 12 t- tournament and stuff, it's a 68 team women's field. Now it used to be 64, <clears throat> but they have expanded it to match the men's tournament. So that's, that probably benefits Baylor too. And the fact to me, um, when you were mentioning about Kansas and, <clears throat> um, you know, the potential of a big 12 team getting a one seed. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, Kansas with its remaining schedule, but also Kansas because it's Kansas. um, It doesn't hurt. (laughs) Yeah. The reigning national champions, you know, a blue blood program. If they're sitting there and the committee is deciding it, 
you know, they just say, ah, yeah, Kansas, that seems right. Yeah. Um, in much in the same way, it just would feel really weird if you don't have the Baylor women in the NCAA tournament. I mean, the run that they've had uh, for as long as they've had. That would be a huge fall. <laughs> yeah, it really would be. And uh, but, uh, Like you, I, I think they're probably going to make it. and They'll probably get it together enough. You know. Yeah, they've got two you know, even without some of the players that they were hoping to have on this team, they've got too many um, good players and, you know, they've shown too much to just like go. Oh, and five in these last five games, you know, I I just can't imagine they would lose to DCU. I mean, that's not even, uh, you know, that shouldn't happen, but um, they've certainly got to start playing better and we'll see how it plays out on Saturday. Uh, you know, and I would not expect there to be a really huge crowd at the Ferrell center. I mean, I think fans are a little, uh, you know, grumbly right now. Yeah. And, and for a lot of good reason too. Sure. Yeah. I mean, this is not what they're accustomed to. And so, you know, Nikki Collin and her staff has some work to do. Uh, all right, John. Well, um, you know, got some good ones coming up on Saturday. It should be a lot of fun. Well, this is a real fun time of year. Yeah. I mean, to me, this is kind of like when March Madness starts, maybe, you know, kind of toward the end of February, you got conference races coming down to the wire. And uh, this is when it just really is really fun to watch. Yeah, it, it's it's like March is already here. If you look at my calendar and all the crap <laughs> that we've got, you know. <laughs> You know, I've always been impressed by that that big uh, big calendar you have. Yeah, well, it's, I it's try like to. The, it's like the Magna Carta or something like that. I try to keep up with what's going on, so we know. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of stuff going on. March is basically here, so uh, you basketball fans, that should be good news. Yeah. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. See, ya. See you, guys.